I am not a productivity guru, but certain life habits have really helped me to optimize my life. So in today's video, I want to share with you 12 of my favorites. And just a heads up, in this video, I'm not talking about my usual topic of money, but I have tons of other videos where I delve deep into personal finance and investing. So if that's what interests you, please feel free to check those out. All right, with that said, let's get started. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. The first productivity habit that has really helped me to optimize my life is a simple one, and that is to make my bed the first thing in the morning. And I like to do this immediately after waking up. Admiral Willem H. McRaven wrote a short book titled Make Your Bed in 2017, inspired by a commencement speech he gave to the graduating class of UT Austin. The main takeaway from the book is this. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride, it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. By the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Admiral McRaven served in the US Navy as a SEAL for 37 years. He commanded at every level, received every military distinction possible, and completed service as the commander of all US Special Operations Forces. A real life hero if you ask me. However, he attributes the start of his career success to the moment when he learned the importance of making his bed during SEALs training. It wasn't anything spectacular or anything worthy of praise. However, it being the first task of the day, it taught him discipline, attention to detail, and most importantly, reminded him that regardless of how the rest of the day went, he had done at least something well to start off the day, no matter how small the task. Now, I doubt I'll ever achieve anything close to Admiral McRaven's amazing career. However, I do have to say that after having done it for many decades, making my bed the first thing in the morning does give me a sense of motivation. It gives my mind a subtle sense of order and makes me feel like I have a level of control regardless of how challenging the rest of the day is going. The second productivity habit that has really helped me to optimize my life is to prepare the majority of my meals ahead of time. I am a very simple man. I wear the same shirt every day. I invest my money in one boring fund. And yes, I eat the same thing every day. For breakfast, I drink a protein shake. For lunch, I eat broccoli, chicken, and brown rice with a green smoothie. For my afternoon snack, I eat a Greek yogurt mixed with protein powder, nuts, and a little bit of granola. It is only dinner that I digress from my prepped meals and eat what the rest of the family wants to eat. Believe it or not, I've been doing this for the past 12 years and it's been one of my favorite life hacks. I'll share with you four key benefits I get from meal prepping most of my meals. One is money. I bulk buy most of my ingredients from Costco, so there's naturally an economy of scale with each meal. As obsessive as this sounds, I actually have a spreadsheet where I keep track of how much each of my meals cost. At one point, I was able to get my lunch down to $1 per meal, but now that is long in the past given inflation. Now, most of my lunch comes out to about $2 to $3 per meal, depending on the price of chicken. Number two benefit is health. One of the greatest barriers to eating healthy is decision fatigue. We all want to eat healthy meals, but to make each meal from scratch really wears on you after a while. The first couple of days you can wake up early and prepare your ideal breakfast, but after a week or so, it is just too hard to keep this going. This is where my meal prep has really helped me with staying on track with my diet. When eating healthy is as easy as pulling out a protein shake bottle from the fridge or microwaving your lunch, you do a much better job of staying the course. The number three benefit is time saved. Related to the earlier point, making healthy meals not only require energy, but time. Time that you most often don't have. This is why often we offer drive through or eating out. But not only are these more expensive, but also less healthy. When all your meals are prepped and ready to eat, you take the time issue out of the formula. The number four benefit is that because you're eating the same thing every day, when you do have a different meal from your prepped meals, you actually enjoy it. Have you ever had a time when you ate out multiple days in a week? The first time is great, but after a few days, they all start to taste the same. You acclimate it. But when you meal prep, you're eating the same thing most of the time. Then when you do eat out, you learn to really enjoy it. The third productivity habit that has really helped me to optimize my life is to always carry around my gigantic water bottle wherever I go. I keep it in my bedside when I sleep, next to my desk when I work, and in my bag when I leave the house. I essentially have it always by my side. We all know it's important to drink plenty of water. We read about it and hear it everywhere. Keep your body hydrated. It carries nutrients and oxygen to our cells. It helps with digestion. It protects our organs and tissues. And it even normalizes blood pressure. But there is a difference between doing and knowing. We want to get better at drinking more water besides just knowing that we need to drink more water. What has really helped me is to never let my topped off water bottle leave my side. And subconsciously, when I see it often, I drink more water regularly throughout the day. It's a simple habit, but one that can have a lasting impact on your health. If you want to know what I carry around, my favorite is this Hydro Flask 40 ounce bottle. It can be a bit heavy for some, but I don't like having to constantly refill it, so I don't mind the weight. My wife carries a 24 ounce lightweight bottle. The number four productivity habit that has really helped me to optimize my life is when it comes to specifically work tasks. And that is to identify my one big frog for the day. 
Brian Tracy popularized this term, eating our frogs, in his best-selling book, as you can guess the title, Eat That Frog. The main idea of the book is this. If the first thing you do each morning is to eat a live frog, then you're done with the toughest thing for the day. Eating that frog means tackling your most challenging task. And it's also the one that can have the greatest positive impact on your life. Essentially, identify your biggest, hardest task of the day and tackle that before you do anything else. Ruthlessly prioritize and focus on that task until you can mark complete. Most of us start the day with not just one task, but five or even 10 must-do tasks. And what we often do is try to tackle all of them, sometimes simultaneously. Write a report, reply to an email, and shop for a new yoga mat all at the same time. Not only is this very ineffective, but leaves us exhausted at the end of the day. And what is worse is that we feel like a failure because we only completed three out of the five tasks or six out of the 10 tasks we initially set out to do that day, and none of them really well. The key to effective time management really comes down to this. Ruthless prioritization. Recognize that we can't do everything, but we can do the most important task well. And that starts with identifying our frog. And this takes time and tremendous work. Usually we try to tackle five tasks at the same time because it's so hard to identify our most important task. It's painful to accept that we can only do one thing when we want to do all five. But do we want to be known for doing five things somewhat bad or one thing really well? I have to constantly do this when it comes to this YouTube channel. As some of you guys might have noticed, I'm not very active on social media. I don't have a TikTok account and I'm barely on Instagram. Maybe they'll change in the future, but for now, I've identified my frog as producing high quality videos. That is my most important task of the day and I have to be content with letting everything else fall to the sideline. All right, once we've identified our frog for today, how do we ensure we get that done? This is where my next productivity habit comes in. The number five productivity habit that has really helped me to optimize my life can be a bit extreme to certain people, but that is to calendar everything. I love calendars and I love using my calendar. My go-to tool is Google Calendar and I use it to schedule everything from my writing time to when I'm picking up the kids from school to when my wife and I are having date nights. For me, putting everything on my calendar serves three main purposes. One, it tells me exactly what I'm supposed to be doing at what specific time. I like to fill out my work schedule the evening before using my big frog as an anchoring priority. I block out specific times for specific activities. For example, 9 to 11 a.m. for writing or 11 to 12 for working out. This way, I'm not second guessing myself throughout the day. Should I be working on something else or what else should I be doing? I already thought through that with my prioritization exercise from the day before. I just need to follow the schedule. Two, it makes sure that I don't forget important events or dates. My wife and I use a shared calendar that automatically syncs and it helps us to stay on top of special events and kids' activities. I don't want to use my brain bandwidth to try to remember what my son's next soccer game is. It's on the calendar and it tells me exactly when, where, and if there are specific instructions I need to be aware of. The number three benefit is after the day or the week has passed. It allows me to analyze how I spent the day or the week and adjust as needed. I could have said my big frog for the week was filming more videos. Yet when I look back on my last week, I only spent two hours on it. This tells me to think through if filming is really my number one priority or if I need to deprioritize other time second items on my schedule. The number six productivity habit that has really helped me to optimize my life is to time block my deep work. Cal Newport, a Georgetown computer science professor, wrote a book titled Deep Work in 2016 to popularize this term. The essence of the term in the book is this. Deep work is the ability to focus without distraction on cognitively demanding tasks. Following a craftsmanship mindset. It's a skill that allows you to quickly master complicated information and produce better results in less time. In today's competitive 21st century economy, it can work as our superpower to achieve extraordinary things. What I like to do is set myself a timer. My favorite is 45 minutes to have uninterrupted, focused time on a single task. This could be writing a script, editing a video, or even planning a weekend trip with my wife. I tell myself I'm going to do nothing else except this one task for the allotted time block. This is my frog for the day, and I blocked on my calendar for this specific task. When I can focus on one task for an extended period of time, not only is it most effective in getting the task done, I produce much higher quality work because I'm applying the full weight of my brain power to that one task. All right, you might be saying that sounds great and all, but what about distractions? This is where the next habit comes in. The number seven productivity habit that has really helped me to optimize my life is another one that could seem a bit extreme to many people and that is to silence your phone notification. You recognize the importance of identifying your priority using a calendar and time blocking deep work. However, if you don't manage your distractions, all your best laid efforts will go to waste. And of all the distractions, the most common one that gets most people are their phones. With all the apps, if you just let your phone do what it does, you'll be pinged with notifications literally every five minutes. Look, you just got an email. Oh, the yoga app has a new training video. Your mom just texted you regarding your sister's birthday next month. And before you know it, the time that you set out to do some deep work turned into a rabbit hole of scrolling through your phone. 
Don't let your precious time turn into a frantic blur of random emails, social media, and pointless notifications. Everyone wants your time, so you need to be the captain of your day, no one else. If you've never done this before, it could be scary. What if you miss out on something important? What if you don't see that text in time? However, you have to ask yourself, what is more important? Being known as someone who responds to text quickly or a respected author who published quality work? Go to your phone and silence all your notifications, apps, emails, and even text. The only one I keep on is my phone. If something is really important, like your house burning down, the hope is that you get a phone call about it, not a text. The number seven productivity habit that has really helped me to optimize my life is to get an inbox. A physical inbox where I can dump all my loose paperwork into, and a digital one to capture all the open thoughts in my head. David Allen, a productivity guru, talks about the importance of an inbox in his best-selling book, Getting Things Done. The purpose of having an inbox, a physical and a digital one, is to capture all the loose information and tasks that are floating around us. We get a piece of mail, and our immediate reaction is to start acting on it open it, read it, and start writing a check. However, when we do this to everything around us, we live a life where we're constantly reacting to our environment instead of driving our most important agenda. What I like to do is have a single physical inbox where all the day's paperwork goes into. I'm not reacting to it, I'm just collecting it. Then at a later point in time, at a time of my choosing, I go through everything that is there to see what action I need to take. This way, I'm in control of when I'm working on them instead of me reacting to the paperwork at its time. And this is especially important as regards to random thoughts in our head as well. A digital inbox could be a notes app on our phone or even a small note card we carry in our pocket. Then whenever there is a random thought that comes to our mind, instead of reacting to it, write it down to review it later. There are a couple of things that happen when we get into the habit of doing this. One, we aren't distracted from what we're currently working on. We aren't shifting our tasks based on what new thoughts or ideas just came to my mind. Second, we're capturing what David Allen calls open loops and finding comfort in the fact that they're being captured somewhere. If we don't write down the random reminders and thoughts that are floating in our mind somewhere, we subconsciously allocate brain bandwidth to try to remember them at a later point in time. When you have an inbox that can capture these thoughts, your brain can quickly refocus on the task at hand because you find comfort in the fact that you've captured it for processing at a later point in time. The number eight productivity habit that has really helped me to optimize my life is practice this concept of clear to neutral, especially after every work session, after a meal, and before going to bed. If you've never heard of this term clear to neutral before, let me explain. Imagine that you're on your way home from a hard day of work and you get the idea to cook up a nice meal. You imagine the ingredients, the process of cooking, and how the final dish will look. However, as soon as you enter the kitchen, you run into a complete mess. You forgot to clean, or as I like to call it, clear to neutral the kitchen last night. So your audacious goal of cooking a great meal is now out the window. You set to clean the kitchen, and by the time you're done, you're so exhausted you order pizza to console your dejected heart. After you're done with your day of work, tidy up and reset your desk so you're ready to jump into your big frog the next day without any roadblock. After cooking a nice meal, clean up everything and place all utensils exactly where they belong so you're ready to jump straight into cooking up your three Michelin star meal tomorrow. When you don't clear to neutral your work and home setting, you're only setting yourself up for failure. Be kind to your future self. The number 10 productivity habit that has really helped me to optimize my life is related to our earlier point of time blocking deep work time, but this time to time block our family time. Despite how much some of us might enjoy our work, when we're on our deathbed, I'm pretty sure our last words aren't going to be, I wish I worked more. Bronnie Ware, a palliative care professional, wrote in her book, Top 5 Regrets of the Dying, how one of the most common regrets she heard from many of her patients was this, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. No one will love us more than our family. No one will give us greater joy, of course joy that comes with some pain, than our family. Many of our work parties will be our frog for the day, but our family will always be the biggest frog outside of our work hours. Make it a priority and block out family time. And put it on your calendar so there is no doubt what your priority should be at that specific time. This doesn't always happen, but I try to block out at least a couple hours each evening to spend time with my kids. Again, I fail more often than not, but this time block helps me to refocus whenever I go astray. The number 11 productivity habit that has really helped me to optimize my life is to read before sleep. We all know reading is important. If you watch any of my other videos, you know how much I emphasize it not only as a way to get better with our finances, but with our lives. But the reality is that it's so hard to find time to read. Audiobooks really help a lot, but if you like to actually read a physical book, one routine that has really helped me is to keep books by my bedside and read even for just 10 minutes before sleep. This checks off a few boxes for me. One, I'm not looking at a device before sleep. The light from our phones and our iPads affect our ability to fall asleep in some bad ways. Second, it calms my mind. Books have a way of slowing down the world around me, and after having spent a couple of hours with my kids, it quiets my surroundings again. And third, I get to catch up on my reading. Even if it's just for 10 minutes, I get to read something I wouldn't have done if I didn't incorporate this habit. 
The number 12 habit that has really helped me to optimize my life is to let go. To not take myself so seriously. Despite how helpful all the tips that I just went over, there is no way someone can practice them every day. If they're saying they do, they're either a freak of nature or just flat out lying. What matters is that we're getting better with our habits. Are we getting 1% or even 0.1% better than yesterday? Because at the end of the day, that is what matters. So let go. Let go of the pressure that you need to practice all the habits that I just went over. I still struggle to practice many of them on a daily basis. And I have days when I just don't feel right, and I say forget it and just binge watch Netflix for an hour. Of course, I go back to my calendar afterwards and update it to reflect what I really spent my time on so I can analyze it later. Bottom line, don't expect perfection. Aim for progression. Thank you guys for watching. In the line of better habits, if you'd like to learn the habits of high performers, please check out my video here. Until next time, all the best. Music